Okay, we're gonna start off with some pho, and then we're gonna go to the mall. I'm gonna get some more books and things. Today we'll be discussing character archetypes in medieval literature. The most common type is the knight errant, a knight who would travel around doing chivalrous deeds. Just like John show. I guess that's where the name came from. The knight errant was often accompanied by a lady who would lead him to his next adventure. The lady really acted as a romantic partner, and she would provide him with the knowledge and tools to defeat his opponents. A girl raises her hand and Professor Kubalt nods at her. If the lady had everything necessary to defeat the bad guys, how come she didn't just do it herself? Maybe she was afraid she'd break a nail. A guy sitting in the back row whispers just loud enough for the girl to hear. Professor Kovalt ignores him. An excellent question, and a perfect segue into your assignment. You'll be writing an essay on the character archetype of your choice, along with an analysis of how it represented medieval culture, and how those types are still used in today's media and culture. Sixteen pages. Until next week. Sixteen pages? That's ridiculous. The guy in the back row sputters indignantly. Professor Gavald gives him a withering glance. I knew. Hardly seems like enough to cover everything that needs to be said, doesn't it? Do your best to be concise. Boo! He got you good. He got you good. Okay, let's go to the mall. It's a quiet enough day. I think I'll head out to the mall. I wonder if Adam wants to come. We don't need to know that because he's hopefully doing homework. <laughs> yeah, right. Thankfully, there aren't many people at the mall today. I take my time wandering from one shop to the next. As I stop outside the Divide, I see a familiar face. Oh, you're that girl. Uh, Sean. And you're Nicole, right? Wow, you remember me? I'm good with names. Lucky you, I'm horrible with names. She frowns and fiddles with a package in her hands. And faces, now that I think about it. But you remembered me. Maddie was pretty upset about you, so of course I remember. Nicole clutches the package closer to her chest. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I didn't make a bad impression, did I? No, he said he met you under poor circumstances, but he's too embarrassed to say what happened. Huh. She turns her gaze to the tiled floor. I really wish he'd tell me. I love Nicole so much, now I can't bear to not tell her the truth anymore. We met the other day when he was filming a commercial. He, uh... I paused, trying to find a way to explain what happened without making it sound bad. He kind of grabbed me and held me, and it was kind of awkward. Maddie did that? Yes, but I think he just panicked. There were a bunch of girls trying to chase him down. I'm a little bit sparse on details. Nicole nods understandingly. I remember that. Security had to clear out several fans and paparazzi from the building. No wonder he was so flustered. Oh, did the shoot turn out okay? No worries, he's always professional in front of the camera. <laughs> and I helped him calm down a bit, too. I don't think I'm going to ask for details on that one. Although I wonder as a sister what she actually did for him. She hoists up the package in her arms. Anyway, I gotta get these clothes back to Maddie. Goodbye, Sean. Bye. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Oh, excuse me. Ugh, needed to swallow, and I uh, couldn't swallow, so I drank some water. Now I'm, now I'm good. <laughs> well, I didn't really expect to see Nicole again. From the look of it, she wasn't expecting to see me either. Oh well. I might as well return to my shopping now. Two brains and puzzles. Let's see. Grades, smarter, um, stress, good for fashion knowledge, workout. These are good for charisma. Um, that one too. Should I just... Well, I need some money for my Halloween costume in a bit. I think I'll just buy the recipes for college students one. At some point, I'll need to use it, I'm sure. I'll just make sure I don't use it accidentally. I enter the studio and immediately begin setting up my station. Ready for another round with the Midnight Clan. Well, now that I know they're part of the Midnight Line, I'm really nervous. Ha. I didn't mean to worry you. Would it make you feel better if I tell you that's not their real name? 
Well, I always assumed Midnight was some sort of stage name. Although, talking about it makes me curious. <clears throat> Dale leans in. Partridge. What? Madeline Partridge. And her son, Matthew Partridge. But don't say it to their faces. Why not? Big industry secret? Eh, nothing a little bit of time online can't tell you. But stage names exist for a reason. Whether it's to build a character, afford privacy, or just not conflict with someone else, it's always important. So calling someone by their given name in a professional setting is rude. The door to the studio opens and a petite girl with golden hair enters. Good morning, Mr. Vincent. I trust everything is ready. Ready as will ever be, Nicole. Nicole scans the room quickly and her eyes settle on me. Sean, what are you doing here? My job, I'm a makeup artist. Oh, I didn't know you were industry. That's not a problem, is it? Of course not, I'm just surprised. Maddie, all clear. I lean towards Dale and whisper to him. What's with the all clear? Am I missing something? Search me, they've always been like this. Okay, I guess I'll just pretend that it's normal. As soon as Matthew enters, the room feels a little colder. His gaze rests on me for a brief moment, and he eyes me with only the faintest recognition. Work mode, huh? It's hard to believe this is the same guy who looked like he was on the verge of tears last time I saw him. Is that the mark of a true professional? Shall we get started? Ready when you are. Matthew sits in front of the mirror and waits patiently for me. Nicole pulls up a chair and sits a few feet away from us. In what appears to be a gesture of friendship, she strikes up a conversation. So, Sean. Yes? How long have you been a makeup artist? Hmm... I think I've lost count. It's been a while, though. Matthew inspects himself in the mirror. I can tell. Your work is very polished. Oh, thank you. Matthew nods coolly and strides off toward the photo area. Nicole pulls her chair closer to me and offers a smile. So, are you new in town? I haven't seen you around before. Yeah, just came here for college. Where are you from? Hawaii, one of the smaller islands. That sounds amazing. It must be gorgeous back there. <laughs> it definitely is. I didn't really notice until I moved to the city, though. You never know what you've got until you've lost it, right? What about you? Are you from around here? Born and raised. I've done a couple of photo shoots elsewhere, but no place as nice as Hawaii. Unlike Maddie, who's already been there twice. Huh. Is that resentment in her voice? What should I do? I think I'll change the subject this time, because I'll do this on her route. So, uh, any suggestions for someone new to the city? Places to eat? More importantly, places not to eat? Oh dear, I'm afraid I couldn't help you out with that. I never eat out. Lies, you ate out with me last time. Really? There's this really great service that makes daily meals and delivers them. Perfectly balanced with only the freshest ingredients. I never have to eat out when I can request anything I want. I'm going to assume that it's out of my price range. <laughs> I guess I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> I'm gonna hold back my commentary on that one. We're finished. Oh, right. Well, let's be on our way. Nicole gathers her things and escorts Matthew out the door without another word to me. Today was a good work day. I earned $300. Sweet, 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 sweet. I've been getting a few hits on my blog lately. It's not a lot, but I feel a little more popular. Hooray. And then to the fur place again. Soup. Okay. Benito Zero. Got another hotel job next Friday night. Right back if you can make it. I'll be there. And Lloyd. Sean, 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 Sean! The network will be calling us with their decision next weekend. Let's meet at the fun place to celebrate. Or drown our sorrows if we don't get greenlit. Either way, see you there. Will do. Anyone else want to talk fashion? It's autumn now. What are you putting in your wardrobe? The short skirts of the divide are just too cute to ignore. Better grab one now before the weather gets too cold to wear it. <clears throat> um, Fatigue 2, I have inventory. Journal. Grades up. Intelligence is up. Of techniques, workout music, charisma is up, charisma is up again, 
fashion is up again, and I won't use that. Um, I think I'll go to Cafe Diem, do some homework. Okay, and then I'm gonna try and see Alvin. I might have to see Alvin twice. He might not tell me this time. But I'll see Alvin, and then I'll work, and then I should probably get pho, and then vlog. That's what we'll do. Professor Kuvalt starts the class by writing out a summary of our upcoming exam. Any questions? A guy sitting near the back raises his hand. Will this test be graded on a curve? Professor Kuvalt arches a single eyebrow. No. Why not? Let's say you order a steak at a restaurant. Then when it arrives, the meat is completely raw. Would you pay for it? Um, no. And what if all the other chefs in the restaurant also sent out uncooked meat? Would you pay for it then? A look of understanding dawns on the student's face. No, sir. No one grades on a curve in real life. And stunningly, this classroom exists in real life. He turns back to the chalkboard and resumes writing. You knew when my office hours are. Indeed. Huh? It takes less time than usual to finish my homework. Good work today. Thank you. It was tough at first, but I think I'm getting used to the school. Oh, he's telling me right now. Hooray! What about the city? Have you gotten to explore it yet? A bit. What about the arcade? There's an arcade? Yeah, really nicely equipped place. I haven't been there in a while, but I can give you the address. Thank you, I'd like that. The coolest arcade in town. I have to go visit there at some point. Alright, fire place then. Get that soup. And I've got to go see Hitman Cavalt for an update. Your grades are acceptable to keep your grant. Good work. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. Hooray, we succeeded at blogging for a change. I was going to say, how did our charisma get so high so quickly? And I just realized I used all those books. Never mind. Benito is waiting for me in the small area hidden from the rest of the dining room. That vest! Hey, congratulations on getting called back. I open my makeup case and immediately get to work on his makeup. Thanks. I've been told the feedback was pretty positive. Although I assume it's because I gave away free dessert. It's hard to say no to that. The real test is tonight. No free dessert this time? Sadly, no. I guess I'll have to actually be good at what I do. So what's the plan for tonight? Card tricks? Rabbit from a hat? It really depends on the audience. I gotta tailor it to them. But in a hotel setting like this, traditional illusions don't work quite as well. It has to be more organic. For instance... Benita holds up a phone. Is this yours? I reach for my phone, but it's not in my pocket. When did you... Well, you know what they say. Magicians have fast hands. How scandalous! Do you plan to flirt with everyone like that? Not sure. Do you think it works? It'll certainly get some hearts to flutter, but I think your appearance makes you a little young for that tactic. Good point. It's getting harder to play the kid angle, but I can't just leap into the adult thing right away. I finish my work with a light powder on his cheeks. All done. Right. Time to get to work. Do your best. I always do. Poor Benito. Mm. Lloyd seems insistent that you join us for lunch today while we wait for the network to phone us about our show. Be at Fur 24 by noon. Thanks, John. Off I go. Hey, little wizard! Ready to meet our destiny? What's with the little wizard? You can transform how people look with your makeup brush, which is like a wand. So you're a wizard! I don't think I've ever heard anyone say it like that before. That's because it doesn't make any sense. You're just jealous you didn't think of it first. Yes, yes, you're very clever. Lloyd stares at his phone laying in the middle of the table as if his gaze can make the call arrive sooner. Don't be so anxious. It'll arrive in its own time. But why isn't it now? Be patient. You... 
The sound of a phone ringing cuts John's sentence short. Lloyd snatches his phone up and frowns. Not mine. It's mine. John stares at his phone in surprise. So answer it! Hello? Lloyd leans in and tilts his head to the side, straining to hear anything from the other end of John's conversation. From the look on his face, I assume he still can't hear anything. Yes, of course. Thank you. John hangs up and sighs. <sighs> so? I'm sorry, mate. My heart sinks in my chest. I know that as much as I wanted the show to happen, Lloyd wanted it even more. Cops and robbers has been greenlit. Yes! Lloyd screams and throws his arms around John in a rough hug. I hate you, you beautiful, beautiful man! Lloyd weighs down the nearest server. Three large bowls of the number five special. And a side of cha gao. No, two. And do you have any of the stuff? I turn to John. Is he always like this? He likes to celebrate. It's worth celebrating. Lloyd finishes his order and returns to our conversation. We've got so much to do. I've got to call the cast for a read-through. Wait! I need to get the scripts finalized first. He turns to me. Oh, right. I needed to ask you something. Um, sure? You do special effects makeup, right? It depends. I did a lot of wounds and stuff for Ancient World and Forbidden Island. Good, good. Because I'd like you to return as the makeup artist for Cops and Robbers. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. There is an artist out west who I want to design the scar for John's character. I'll give him your contact info so you can talk it out. Of course. Thank you very much. Don't forget my birthday is this Thursday. Was well, thinking we could hang out in the afternoon, yeah? Yeah, probably. This is your first and only homework reminder. Your first paper is due next Wednesday. I do not accept late submissions. Bill Kuvolt. Hello, Sean. My name is Snickerdoodle King. You can thank my parents for that. And Lloyd asked me to contact you regarding makeup for his upcoming show. I see you already have experience, so I trust you'll be able to pick up on my design. If you have any questions, please refer to my book on advanced makeup techniques. It's available at nearly every Brains and Puzzles store. Thank you, Snickerdoodle. I already got it and read it. I don't know. I think the movies have a shot if they get the right director. The last few have been good. Except the director said he's not coming back for any more. Ouch. Hope they find someone good to replace him. Okay, I got a fatigue of eight. Should I sleep? Yeah. Maybe I will. I'll just sleep. Let's go to the VG zone. And then we'll work. And then probably pho and then blog. Something like that. Um, VG zone, there we go. The neon sign outside the arcade proclaims that it's open. Before I even open the door, I can already hear the pounding of energetic music mingled with recorded catchphrases. Once inside, my eyes take a moment to adjust to the darkness. The glowing screens of arcade games shine out in the dim lighting enticing anyone who passes by. At the far end of the room, I spy Zombie Hunter 3. The familiar theme song blares at me from the machine. I haven't played in a while, but it couldn't hurt to give it a go. I kneel in front of the machine to deposit some quarters, but a small sign on it reads, Tokens only. Okay, tokens. Where would I get those? A group of small children is congregated around a machine in a nearby com uh, corner. Nearby computer? <laughs> a sign above the machine reads, Tokens. Well, there you go. Hey, mister! The token machine ate my money! A young boy grabs at the shirt of a passing arcade attendant. Ah, oh, the attendant shakes his head. It's out of order. That's why there's a sign that says, out of order. Use the other token machine. Benito? Upon hearing my voice, Benito whirls around. Sean, what are you doing here? Well, the plan was to play Zombie Hunter 3, but it would appear the token machine is broken. Congratulations. You can read, which puts you ahead of half of the people in here. Benito inspects the broken machine. You know, I even put tape over the coin slot so no one could put any coins in. And they ripped it off! Is it really that hard to just read the sign? I've never seen you so upset before. Ugh. He runs his fingers through his spiked hair. 
You should come by more often. It's not that rare of an event. Sorry about that. Uh, it's not your fault. Besides, I've got to pay the bills somehow. What bills? You live on your own? Yeah, I live in a small studio apartment nearby. Rent's not so bad, and it's close to a bus line. I work here just enough to pay the rent and get food off my earnings doing magic. It's a real motivation to do well when your next meal hangs in the balance. But what about your parents? Where are they? Japan. Or Italy, depending on the time of the year. I'd rather not talk about them, if that's okay. Sorry for prying. Um... I searched for a way to steer the topic of conversation. You said there was another token machine? Benito jerks his thumb over his shoulder. Over there, but if you want tokens... He pulls a handful of coins from his pocket and holds them out to me. Just take them. Is it really okay? You won't get in trouble? Just this one should be fine. Free tokens? Oh, thank you. Benito pours the tokens into my outstretched hand. Have fun. Anyway, wish I could chat, but I've got to go clean the dance machine using nothing but a cotton swab. Understood. See you later. I devote the next hour or so to shooting down zombies. I'm a bit rusty, but it's still fun. I want to say goodbye to Benito, but he's busy with a group of teenagers. I wave to him and he gives me a quick nod as I leave. Well, thanks, Benito. I'll be interested to see what you have to say about Lloyd when I bring him around. Alright, 524. Fatigue is at zero. Good. Well, today's Adam's birthday. Yeah, I'll go buy him a gift. Brains and puzzles. I don't think I need any of this for Lloyd. Give him the gift the gift cube. <laughs> yep, that that's a good choice. Hope he likes it. Hey, what's up? Happy birthday, I got you something. I hope you like it. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Thank you. So what did you want to do? Well, normally I'd say we should take a walk to the seawall and just hang out while we watch the ocean, but that's kind of not an option. Uh, walk around campus then? Sure. It's better than nothing. Adam and I stroll out onto the campus and take our time to admire the architecture. We've been here for over a month and I still don't know this place too well. That much time has passed already? You've got to be kidding me. Sorry. Across the lawn, a group of students spies Adam. They begin waving frantically. Adam, sing a song! Buy my album and you can hear it as many times as you like. Adam waves back at them, then ducks behind a wall. How they recognize me? They're like a gajillion feet away. I'm not sure that's a number, but I see your point. This is weird. I did tell you this was going to happen. I didn't say you were wrong. I just didn't think it would be quite like this. Well, birthday boy, you're going to have to get used to it. I'll get used to it tomorrow. And I think that's enough exploring for now. I've got to go meet John for a thing anyway. How very specific. I do my best. See you later. So specific, though. Oh dear. Ah, there's Lloyd. We're ready to start filming for Vice Versus. New name for cops and robbers. Does it sound cooler? It's supposed to sound cooler. We start next Monday afternoon. Can't wait to see you there. Who? Oh, this is Lloyd, by the way. Sorry, John gave me your number. Oh, Lloyd. Lloyd, 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 Lloyd. Um... So I have his number now, but I won't be able to call him. He'll be like, ah, oh, I can't make it though, until after the um, Halloween-y thing, probably. So I'll go to the question mark place. I enter the shop and am immediately greeted with an overwhelming silence. This is kind of weird. Hello? My voice is nearly swallowed up by the silence. Yeah, if you see anything you want, just holler. A muffled voice from the back of the shop calls out, but I don't see anyone. And try not to break anything. I move slowly through the shop, trying to inspect anything that catches my eye. Books in tons of languages, some old instruments, a rubber ducky. Do I even want to know what's in this trunk? That woman was right. 
The best way to describe this place is as a shop that sells stuff. Okay. So Lloyd would like us to get him the pocket watch for his birthday. So I have enough for that. And to get John something. Ooh. I have enough, but just enough. I'll come back. I'll come back and get that. I just want to make sure I have enough money for the fairy costume. At some point, whenever it comes around. Um, and then this week... Get fa... Get fa. And work blog work. I do my best to arrive early for the first day of filming, but the place is already bustling when I arrive. Hi hi, little wizard! Ready to make some magic? I'll do my best, sir. Lloyd! L lloyd Better! Afternoon, mate. Good to see you're dressed normally. Lloyd makes a face. It only happened once. I'm just delighted you lived through it. Am I missing something here? Nope! Lloyd hurriedly ushers me in the direction of the makeup trailer. I'm sure Selena's waiting. What about John? Not here to film today. Just watching. Uh, okay. I head to the makeup trailer, but I'm still mystified about what John was teasing Lloyd about. Selena is waiting for me when I enter the trailer. I really was hoping to make a good impression by showing up early, but she showed up even earlier. Good afternoon, Miss Haraway. Oh, you again. Oof. Yeah, Lloyd asked me to be here. That sounds like him. He's a good man. Selena seats herself in the makeup chair. Let's not keep him waiting. I finish Selena's makeup quickly, and filming begins without a hitch. The afternoon is filled with a lot of running back and forth, but it's not as hard as it was last time I was here. Woohoo! I'm surprised fitness isn't a thing with Lloyd. <laughs> it really should be. But... Maybe that's a third Yeri stat that I can work on at some point. Yeah, third Yeri. That's a number, I'm sure. Oh boy. Well, I'm gonna have to use that book. Lingun. Your father will be starting physical therapy this week. The doctor says it will be some months before he can walk again, but at least he can bend his knee a little now. Hooray. Yep, definitely gonna use that book. There we go. And then... What's our money situation? 285? Maybe I'll just go to Cafe DM. Do some homework. There we go. And then... We can work... Blog, work, town, blog. Let's try it. Let's see how we do this time. Probably gonna fail so badly. Cut! Lloyd weaves his way deftly through a series of wires and cameras towards Selena. He offers her a few quiet notes, but it's hard to hear what he's saying. Selena nods understandingly and Lloyd beams. 20 bucks says that Lloyd jumps up and down three times before he calls action. I jump a little at the sound of someone next to me talking. What? <laughs> she points at the duo. Lloyd's gonna start bouncing like a kid on sugar in three, two. Lloyd gives Lena a thumbs up, then launches into three small hops as he exits the set. <laughs> That'll be 20 bucks, please. I never agreed to that bet. Shame, I could have made a killing. The camera operator extends a hand. Rachel. I accept it and she gives me a vigorous handshake. Sean, and how did you know he'd do that? You learn to pick up on the quirks of the various directors you work with. Lloyd starts jumping around when he gives directions to cast members he likes. And those he doesn't? A whole lot of pointing. So you new here? Most of the crew already know each other from other shows, but I haven't seen you before. This is my first show. Oh, pleasure to meet you. You do good work. Oh, thank you. You do good work, too. Yeah, I know. Alright, quiet on the set! Rachel immediately turns back to her camera, and I fade into the rest of the crew. Alright, we've met Ray now. Good, good. Hmm, looks like blog traffic is going up. 
It's not much, but I feel a little more popular. Hooray! Oh, I can't believe I succeeded at that. Girl! Girl, you're so good, though. Good job. Good job, that Sean. Oh, dear. Well, it couldn't last forever. Dale. Quick shoot this Tuesday morning. Respond if you can make it, please. I will be there. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you. See you this week. And Snickerdoodle. Hello, Sean. This is Snickerdoodle King. Again. A friend of mine in your area is looking for makeup artists for a Halloween haunted house next weekend. I thought of you. Please reply if you are available. I'm not, though. Halloween is next weekend. Got your costumes yet? There are a ton of great costumes at the Divide if you don't have one. I'm set. I made my costume this year. Ooh, look at the overachiever. I think I'm gonna stay inside and binge on candy this year. Dude, I bought that candy for kids. You can't eat it all. Watch me. Okay, I don't have anything else, so I guess I'll sleep. And then... We'll figure out what we're going to do leading up to Halloween. Yeah.